diamonds and pearls. Does that ring a bell? Hmm, well, we sure have a gem. Robia Scott in studio with us today. Robia was hired by the late icon Prince to play the role of Pearl for his hit album, Diamonds and Pearls. She's also worked as a professional dancer, acted on the hit series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer in 90210 and had a thriving career in Hollywood. However, she decided to leave it all behind when she encountered the true star, Jesus Christ. Robia now serves in full-time ministry as a gifted and sought after speaker, teacher, author, and coach, and shares her message of emotional healing through her book, Counterfeit Comforts, Freedom from the Impostors that Keep You from True Peace, Purpose, and Passion. Additionally, after a 15-year acting hiatus, Rubia made a return to the big screen by landing a starring role in the major motion picture and anointed pro-life film, Unplanned. So join our conversation with Robia as she shares biblical tools of transformation and equips you to experience the freedom, fun, and fullness that God created you to enjoy. Savior, you're all I Welcome to our show, dear friends, the Elena and Natalia show. We're twin hosts. I'm Natalia Moranian. Hi, and I'm Elena Moranian. Well, what do you get when dance meets destiny and film meets faith? Well, a pearl is born. <laughs> you, our special guest with us today, Robia Scott. I'm the third sister. You are. I'm here. You're the triplet. <laughs> I know, you're our triplet. Unfortunately, I, mean, I colored my hair, yeah, so, trainer. you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a brunette at heart. We're the twins, but she, yeah, she went yes. blonde, so you're my twin today. I'll yes. go back to Burnett's The Burnett's, Burnett's <laughs> Club. Exactly. Welcome. We're so happy to have you on. Thank uh, you so much. It's Aww. a pleasure. We were so excited for this and yes. we have so much to discuss and you've had such an illustrious career and Holy Spirit filled anointing over you. So you're so welcome on the show to just share your heart okay, and great. wherever the Holy Spirit leads. Thank yeah. you. To start off yeah. with, we felt led to look up yeah. your name meaning, Robia, yeah. and it actually says your name meaning is bright fame, shining glory. Ooh. Isn't that I think prophetic? it's German. European. Yeah. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah. I love that. And we feel it's so prophetic because like God's glory is all over you. Yeah. Thank you. And you're making his name famous through what you're doing. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. I love that. Right. <laughs> Fame, shining Fame glory. glory. Mm. Oof. I just feel there's That's so good. much power in yeah. name. So tell us about your upbringing, where you're from. Robia sounds a little Italian too. So. Yes, I'm Italian, but American Italian. Okay. American Italian. So I was born here. Um, a little bit of my background, for those who don't know, I was that little girl who danced around the house. Really? Aww. Aww. Did, did, was that you guys? Did you well, dance you around? Know, she I love to <laughs> dance, but I'm more shy, so it was never in public. It was just privately at home when the music but came She has on. some good dancers. <laughs> one's I want to see them. No, I can't okay. shy. <laughs> so I danced around yeah. and just you know put on shows for the family and um then I saw the movie Flashdance okay. yeah. back in the day you guys might we have, have been a little young yeah. for that one okay so I saw the movie Flashdance and that's when I realized oh my goodness you could actually be a dancer outside of your yeah. living room you know yeah. you could do it for a living yeah so I started pursuing dance I actually uh my parents I can't believe they let me do this but I got a big old huge perm <laughs> I love so it so it was you know the and 80s you know, throwback curly well no it's sort of wavy okay. but I got the perm wow. to look yeah. like Jennifer Beals yeah. Um, bought a ton of leg warmers <laughs> and was uh, went professional. So I started training really seriously, went professional at 16, mm -hmm. uh, started doing music videos. Mm -hmm. And then it was a few years down the line where um, I was discovered by Prince. Yes, yes, you were. And so he had a, an album coming out called Diamonds and Pearls. Yes. And he was looking for two identical twins. I love My him. God. But he couldn't find two dancing oh, twins because you weren't a dancer, you were. girl. <laughs> you weren't born yet. You, 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 oh, gosh. They weren't oh, born no. yet. <laughs> oh, no. no, we were in the process. Oh <laughs> my lord, help oh. me. <laughs> so, you're a triplet. Yeah. You're oh, a triplet. You're long, I'm your early triplet. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so he was looking for twins, couldn't find a set of twins that he liked, and so yeah. he saw me and another girl, and we look a lot alike, yes, so yes, he just do. made us the twins, Aww. and we started auditioning, uh, not auditioning, we started rehearsing for uh. one video, and then he realized, oh, I'm going to actually name the other girl Diamond, name me Pearl. Pearl, and so then we were the muses for the album. Wow, Diamonds Certainly. and Pearls, this certainly a beautiful, I know, like name meaning. I mean, why did 
Prince choose for you to be the pearl? Was there a reason? That's funny that you asked that? that. He did. He had, he said that because my personality was a little bit of that sort of hidden, like a little bit in the Aww. shell. Aww. But then when you like open it up, it's Aww. a beautiful, a beautiful um, Shining. gift and a beautiful treasure. I love the Do name. you have any favorite memories that you have of Prince? Oh How was he as a person? He was, he, yeah. he was like you would think. He okay. was sort of eclectic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you reach that level of fame, you know, you do have to, you kind of retreat a little bit into right. your own world because you can't, you can't interact with the world the same way. Yeah. Wow. Um, but he was really good to us. Yeah. He loved making music. That's all he would mm. do. He was just he would just create. Yeah. And uh, we had an incredible time just traveling the world. We would do our show, our, our big arena show, and then he would book us in a nightclub after that. And so we'd be out <laughs> dancing, you know, oh. doing a little impromptu show, and people would just show up at the club and have no idea that they were going to get a free concert, right? right? So it was an extraordinary experience. I wasn't a believer at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, but he was pretty wholesome. Like he was just about making music. It wasn't a crazy oh. rock star like kind of situation. Yeah, and yeah. you got to experience you that. You experienced and the, talent, the fame, the excitement, well. the traveling the world. Yeah. And then you retired from dancing. I did. <laughs> At the I mean, pinnacle I would of the too career. If I had that opportunity. After <laughs> Prince, I After mean, Prince, what else can you do? <laughs> so I retired from dancing. Power move. Transitioned into acting because okay. that seemed like the next logical yeah. step. Being in LA and staying in the industry right. and then just continuing to expand my creative expression. Yeah. So started training again as yeah. an actress with the same intensity that I trained as a dancer yeah. many hours a day. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't long before. I got an agent and started mm -hmm. auditioning for shows. So I did shows like Beverly Hills 90210, mm -hmm. uh, CSI, a whole bunch of shows. And then I got Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Wow. So people recognized me a bit from that show yes. because I was on for a few years and it was such a hit show. And so it was, it was around that time, um, a couple years into my time on Buffy, mm -hmm. that uh, God started wooing me. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. On we Buffy were... the Vampire Slayer, mm -hmm. when God started wooing you. It's mm -hmm. so ironic. I know. <laughs> on something that may sound kind of demonic, yeah. you're meeting the divine. Yes. But yeah. you are slaying vampires. But interesting. <laughs> yes, you're slaying the giants, the demons. Yes, yeah, I didn't name. know it at that time. At the time you did it. it. Well, I've always believed in God. Okay. But I started seeking more fervently mm. around that time when I was on Buffy because... Yeah. You know, I was at the top of my game. Mm. I had achieved so much at such yeah. a young age. Yeah, well, I think if you achieve that much, why would you need what God? More? Most people would think. And, you know, it's that kind of cliche. Mm. Like, you really feel like if yes. you have success, you have exactly. it all. And I had the success. I was traveling the world. I was making a right. lot of money. Right. But, you know, internally, I was struggling yeah. with things that you wouldn't realize by looking on the outside. Yeah. So, you know, I was a chain smoker. I hated being a Addicted and, and um, feeling controlled to that. Right. Um, I was fearful. I felt mm -hmm. anxious. Uh, but the thing I was struggling with the most was my body image mm -hmm. and my relationship with food, which you would never know by looking at me yeah, because right. here I am on screen Good. and I'm portraying this you know, dancer and mm -hmm. I don't look like I have yeah. an issue. I've yeah. always been fit. Mm -hmm. But where I was living on the inside, mm -hmm. you know, constantly worried about how much I ate, if I wasn't eating, what my body looked like. You know, I would binge. I got into binging and purging a little bit. So I was really struggling. Yeah. So because of that, I started looking for answers. Mm -hmm. And in Southern California, where mm -hmm. I was at the time yeah. and where we still are, yeah. um, when you are seeking God, you don't usually bump right into Jesus first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you find more of the spirituality. Exactly. So it, anything spiritual is good as long as it's not Jesus. Mm. Right? Yeah. So I got into, you know, a little bit of new age meditation and all of these kinds of things, yoga and, and trying these types of practices mm -hmm. and reading a lot of self-help books, which I realized later is a total oxymoron. <laughs> yeah. Because yourself <laughs> is the not. problem. Exactly. And now you're looking to yourself That's to so solve good. the problem that yourself yeah. created. Wow. Oh, so true. So you know, <laughs> never actually quite think about it. Though, I realized right? if myself knew what the heck it was doing, yeah. I wouldn't have been in that problem in the first you place. You won't be searching for self-help. Self -help. It's such an oxymoron. <laughs> Isn't it? Put it that way. Wow. So in the Bible says God's ways are higher. Amen. His ways are greater. So yeah. we really need something Run higher and greater than ourselves. Yeah. And later, actually, I found a quote, you guys are going to love this, by yeah. Einstein. Okay. okay. And Einstein said, no problem can be solved by the same level of consciousness that created it. Wow. That's no deep. problem can be solved by the same level of consciousness that created it. So we there need you a go. higher consciousness. You need a, a higher, higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. You need God. Amen. Amen. So I was doing my self-help, but I was still chain smoking. I was still tormented. Mm. And I had some people start to talk to me about Christianity. But honestly, I was a bit hesitant okay. because I thought, well, what does being born again mean? Yeah, what did you think it meant? Is it? Well, I thought, I think what 
many people in the world yeah. think. You yeah. know, it means that I have to be super conservative and wear my hair in a bun and, <laughs> you know, live on dirt in Africa and yeah. can't have cute shoes and I oh, like cute shoes. Girl, 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 <laughs> the Lord loves some shoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The higher the, the heel, heel, the, the higher closer to heaven. heaven. <laughs> I love that. In Texas, it's the higher the, the hair. Well, almost, wow, it's almost there. <laughs> oh my goodness, I've never, I'm taking that. Yeah, yeah. stealing the that. Heels yeah. closer to Do heaven. we love our high heels? Yes, I'm feeling very close up to your walking loose right now. Jesus. <laughs> so I was hesitant, yeah. and I didn't know, you know, what it entailed. But God is so awesome, and yeah. the Bible says, if you seek with a sincere heart, I He'll reveal that. Himself. Oh, so He really did. He started just showing me different signs and things, and kind of wooing me to Him. Yeah. And I wound up finding myself in this uh, in a church in this mm. cool African American like nice. just gospel awesome church. <laughs> so that's where I became a Christian, and that's where I started growing in the Lord. And it wasn't long after that that I felt like I had an affinity for the things of God and mm. for prayer and for the yeah. Spirit, and and everything I was going on yeah. TV wise and being on Buffy. I yeah. just felt like mm, that's a conflict. Okay, so, so your spirit sensed that automatically after pretty becoming, quickly. Oh, it's interesting because you had the success with uh, Prince, Dancing with Prince, yes. at the pinnacle of your career, and then success in the world with a hit series like Buffy the Vampire yeah. Slayer. And you had it all, or so it seemed, but still you weren't satisfied. And so that led to your search for more, for deeper, for the truth. Yeah. And you ultimately were so hungry that you ended up asking the Lord for a sign. And can you share <laughs> that story and how God literally answered your prayer? One of my stories, and this is how personal and awesome yes, God is. Yeah, so I'm on the freeway this. and I'm praying and I'm, <laughs> I'm driving my car and I'm saying, okay, God, you know, I believe in you. Yeah. I don't get the whole born again thing. Mm -hmm. I don't get, you know, where does Jesus mm -hmm. fit? How can there only be one way? But I say, God, if this is real, if Jesus is real, just give me something, yeah. you know, show me some signs, point me in that direction. And if you speak to me, then I will do my part and I'll start yeah. pursuing a little bit and start looking at the Bible because hello, I've, I'm reading every self-help book, but, the Bible. but God says to me, you know, I wrote a book, you might yeah. want to check out that book. Yeah. So I said, let me, you make the first move, show me something oh. and then I will, I'll pursue. So I'm driving in my car and as this is happening, I realize in the middle of my prayer, all of a sudden like, whew, I'm encompassed by the biker gang. Wow. And you know how they travel in a pack? Yes. There were a couple in front of me, some on the side, some in the back. I mean, I was in the middle of the pack. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how ironic. You know, I'm praying, I'm asking God for a sign, and I've got the hell's angels. <laughs> yeah. Bikers around me with the leather jackets, and they looked pretty tough. So I've got the two bikes in front of me, and I look a little closer on the back of their jackets, and there are big crosses on their wow. jackets. And over the cross, it says, we ride for Jesus. Amen. Man. He literally answered. Literally yeah, answered. sense of humor. We ride for Jesus. We ride for Jesus. Why do you think he chose that imagery? You know, I think God just knows who I am and my personality, okay. and he wanted to show up in a way that's not religious, okay. not, you know, my grandma's church, which yeah. is nothing wrong with that, yeah. but in a way that I would relate to, mm. that I would think was funny, and I did. I was cracking up. So I thought, okay, this is very funny. Aww. And so it was one thing after another, little steps. And there's so much stories I'm sure you can share. And that it was reminded one. me, yeah. actually, when you were saying hell's angels, yeah. when you were a compass, it says that though 10,000 may fall at our yeah. side, we will be protected. Yeah. And you being in Hollywood, you know, there's so much evil surrounding yeah. you, but you are that shining light. And as long as you look ahead where we write for Jesus, yeah. you will lead. And there is really path. one way to Jesus. Yeah. He is the way, the he truth, is the and way. the life. Yeah. So and many times God many will, you know, he wants light in the darkness. So he'll yeah. bring people into Hollywood. Yeah. But for me, I felt that he was pulling me out. out. So I spent, so I walked away from mm -hmm. my career and it was thriving. Mm -hmm. And just, it was a real faith jump to yeah. just for sure. jump into God and go deep into the things of the spirit because he told me he had a ministry platform for me wow. and that the gifts I had uh, for communication and for yes. expression that I had used as an artist, yeah. he was now going to use for the kingdom. Amen. And so that's what he started to do, fashion this ministry. And, and much of it is based on my testimony of counterfeit yes. comforts. Yes, which and, right here yeah. is the beautiful book that Rabia wrote, Freedom from the Imposters That Keep You from True Peace, Purpose, and Passion. Pick up your copy. It's on your website now. It's on correct? my website, yes. rabiascott.com. Yes. So I'd like to know, right after you saw that imagery of we write for Jesus, how was your relationship with the Lord then? Did you immediately decide to transform your life? No. Or what happened? <laughs> no, it you wasn't It wasn't like a movie days, where I was like, yeah, no, I'm a Christian. Yeah. All over the, from the freeway <laughs> and born again. <laughs> no, it wasn't that, but that was the first. Beginning. It was the beginning. Mm. Yeah. So, and then it was just a few fun things, and I do tell more about it in my yeah. book. Yes. I talk about meeting an actress at uh, 
um, an interview, yeah. and she had some cool things. And then I also, I don't know if this is in the book, but I think you guys might like this. When I was still searching and, and just didn't know, you know, what being a Christian meant, yeah. I was reading a magazine article mm -hmm. yeah. uh, about Michelangelo. Oh, I love this. This For is a good story, this. too. Yeah. <laughs> and... In the article, it talked about how when Michelangelo went to sculpt, he didn't try to create a sculpture. Mm -hmm. He would actually see the finished masterpiece, wow. the finished work yeah. already wow. inside the slab of marble. And all he would do is chip away at the excess that was mm -hmm. keeping it from being what it already was. Wow, so, stunning. And when I read that right away, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, that's who I am. I'm not going to take away your passion. I'm not going to take away your personality. I'm not going to take away your fun. Yeah. But if you will allow me, I will chip away at the mm. eating issues, mm. the fear, the cigarettes, the anxiety, all the things you're dealing with that are keeping mm -hmm. you from being the masterpiece oh, that you so already profound. are. I always say we're all pieces of the master. We're mm. his masterpieces. Yeah. So a beautiful masterpiece. You're his masterpiece. He spoke to you again through a magazine article. Only God, the Holy yeah. Spirit can give that God revelation. will speak in obscure ways. It yeah. says that in the Bible too. So sometimes we think yeah. it has to be a pastor speaking no. or even through the Bible, which of course God speaks yes. through those, yes. but he'll speak through billboards. He'll speak through license plates. He'll speak <laughs> yeah. through how, you know, the hell's, hell's angels, angels, bikers that aren't hell's angels, but Jesus Whatever bikers. Whatever is most unique to and you and resonates. people think, well, how can I hear God's voice? He yeah. doesn't speak to me, but he is speaking. We just need to be in tune to that. So just to know that he can speak in such creative and unique ways as he did with you is freeing as well. Most people, if they open their eyes and look around, can see that yeah. God is always speaking. Talk to us more about after becoming a Christian. You said something interesting in your book, I believe, that your problems didn't go away, that they almost came to the surface, specifically Some with the weight issue state. and the eating disorders, yes. and just share a little on that. So I became a Christian. I got plugged into a church. Yeah. I started growing and finding freedom in so many Important. areas, yeah. but the area with food got worse. Okay. So I thought, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, aren't, isn't this just supposed to go away? Mm -hmm. And so now I'm reading the Bible, yes. and so the Lord's speaking to me more through the Bible, because yes. that's one of the ways He speaks to right. us. And I want to address that more, too, yes. because as a minister now of almost 20 years, I yeah. find that so many people feel that they cannot hear God's exactly. voice. Mm. So that's one of the things I address so much in the book, and yes. we'll get back around yes, to that. Because we'll we'll that is more. a good point. So um, I, I asked the Lord, you know, what's going on mm -hmm. um, with this eating issue? Why is it not getting better? And he led me to John 10, 10. The enemy mm -hmm. comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And he said, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean the enemy is not going to steal, kill, and destroy. Actually, he's going to turn up the heat now mm -hmm. because now you're on the road to your destiny. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the narrow path. Now, you know, you're walking yeah. with me. So the enemy is going to look for those vulnerable places and try to take you out. Mm -hmm. So I cried out to God. I said, all right, Lord, help me. Help me with this food issue. Mm -hmm. And the Lord started to speak, not mm -hmm. through an audible voice, yeah. but right away I, I sensed the Lord say, food is not your issue, mm -hmm. but you're using food as a counterfeit comforter. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hence the book, yeah. Counterfeit, counterfeit Comforts. Comfort. So I said, Lord, what does this mean, counterfeit comforts? Comfort. I'd never heard anyone say that. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard that terminology. Again, he led me back to the Bible because mm -hmm. that's a great way that he confirms that his spirit is speaking to you. Yeah. That in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is called the comforter. Amen. And so the Lord said, you know, food isn't your problem, but you're using food to comfort yourself. Mm -hmm. You're using food when you feel fearful, when you feel anxious, when you feel discouraged. You don't know how to process these feelings. Mm -hmm. So you're running to food. But I want to teach you how to come to the true comforter. Mm -hmm. See, food isn't the issue. Food is really just a fruit of an unhealthy root. Wow, food, food isn't the issue. It's food just is the, the issue. fruit of an unhealthy root. I love heart. it, rhymes. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes, and all of our addictions or things like that are just fruits to an unhealthy root. Mm. Alcohol, cigarettes, you know, there are many counterfeit comforts. So yeah. alcohol isn't the issue. Cigarettes aren't the issue. There's an underlying root that is causing to be, someone to run to those counterfeits. Yes. To weed it out. Yeah. Yes, it can be trauma from our past, mm. abuse. Mm -hmm wounding. So it can be very, very deep, um, you know, severe yeah. situations that we run to those things to escape, right? you know, to get comfort. Or even if you weren't in a situation where you had extreme trauma, yeah. you know, we're here on earth. So we're all dealing with right. stuff. Yeah. You know, we're all the product of something, whether it be divorce or just you're in life and you get rejected or hurt yeah. or betrayed. Heartbreak, everything. All of yeah. that. So it's learning how to really process all of that and to transfer the dependence. That's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, if you'll allow me, I'll teach you how to transfer the dependence from the mm. counterfeit. Mm 
mm. to the true comforter. It's such a good teacher. It really yeah. is a process. And it's interesting because you mentioned that when you became a Christian, you went to, you did all the right things. You went to church, mm -hmm. you prayed, you Reading read the, the word, but you mentioned in your book that some of your darkest days were as a Christian yeah. where you were free from every area, except you were still struggling yeah. to bondage with your eating disorder. Yes. Why do you think that is? Because most people think that, you know, becoming a Christian will solve all of their problems and it should immediately be all butterflies roses and, and roses. <laughs> but actually it was intensified, as you mentioned. It was, I mean, in reality, uh, you know, just accepting the Lord doesn't make all of your soul issues right. get completely yeah. healed. Mm -hmm. You know, instantly we're transformed out of darkness and into light yes. spiritually. Our spirits, and yeah. instantly, you know, old things have passed away and all things have become new spiritually. Amen. But there's a process of, yeah. in the soul, mm. old things passing away and all things becoming yes. new. And that's really the core scripture of Counterfeit Comforts, the book, which is 3 John 2. Mm. Beloved, I pray above all I things that, that you prosper and are in health even as your soul, soul. prospers. Mm. So for me as a minister, I see people that love God and are in the Lord, but they don't know how to get that soul prosperity. And yes. soul is mind, will, and emotions. Yes. So to the, the Bible says in that scripture, to the degree in which we prosper in our soul mm -hmm. is the degree in which we prosper in life. Amen. So I love to teach people how to do that with the same pattern and process that God took me through. And it's all in there, how he, because you can just say, oh, well, just transfer your dependence onto right. the Lord. Yeah. You know, just surrender all. Exactly. But what does that mean when you're shoving how? Oreos in your mouth? <laughs> yeah. What does that mean when you're having a panic attack? What does that mean when you're struggling with things? You know, we try to trust him and we yeah. try to surrender, mm -hmm. but What's the how-to process mm -hmm. of that? Yes. So that's what I love to open up for people. Yeah. You know, these are the scriptures. These are the biblical tools. This is the way you do warfare. This is how to discern the voice of God. This is how to discern the voice of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And it's hearing God, like you stated right away. We are all hearing God. Amen. But we have to know that we're hearing Him mm -hmm. and just discern the difference between the other voice of the enemy, the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And hearing is connected to our healing. The more we oh, hear like him, hearing because he told me about counterfeit hearing. comforts, you know, I heard one thing from the Lord and it completely wow. and you wrote a book changed my it, life. And I wrote yeah. a book. And now That's there's good thousands fruit. of people <laughs> that are getting free from these principles because they're biblical principles. They're not mine. Yes. They're from the Bible. You do a lot of ministering and counseling. So what is the first step that people need to take to renew their soul? The first place that God led me mm -hmm. when I was searching for wisdom was the book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. yes. which is full of wisdom. So one of the themes that I noticed in Proverbs was was about the words of your mouth. Yes. So before I was a believer, I didn't understand that. I thought, oh, you just say whatever you want to say. Right. You just say what you feel. You say what you think. You say mm. what you see. But Scripture is very clear that that's what natural, normal people do, but that's not what spiritual people do. Oh. And that God's actually given us a weapon. It's the mm -hmm. sword of the Spirit in Ephesians 6, which is the Word of God. Amen. So He started taking me through a process of learning how to use the sword of the Spirit. So when I would get hit with fear, mm. instead of starting to ruminate in fear, uh, abiding in it, allowing it to um, marinate and to grow, yeah. I would start to use my sword. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy, yeah. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. So that was just one of the tools. But I, again, I like flesh it out yes. much more in the book about yeah. how to identify the lies the enemy's planted, how to take those thoughts captive, how to bring them down and to the obedience of Christ, yes. and then how to replace them with speaking the word. Mm -hmm. So it's this whole process of mind renewal yeah. that it doesn't just come because we love the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't just come even just from reading the Bible, mm -hmm. even though the Bible's a big piece. Mm -hmm. It's really what we do in the moment, mm -hmm. how we discern, how we work with ourselves, how we choose in the moment, what mm -hmm. we're choosing, death or life, life or death. Yes. Yeah. So... Out of the peace. abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart is going to speak. So yeah. we need to be speaking life and speak prosperity over your damn favor because yes. out of the mouth. You know? And there's nothing impossible with God. I mean, God is a God of miracles. He can do anything for us. He can instantly remove the yes. eating disorder. He can yeah, instantly he can. remove the addiction. And He does. But in some cases, He also wants us to partner, partner. with Him and collaborate yeah. with Him. He wants us to be able to go through the process of seeing that miracle in action to know that, yes, He's a God of miracles, but He wants us to co-partner with Him. How did you experience that co-partner? Yes, I appreciate you oh. saying that because there is a miraculous, instantaneous yes. side of God, which yeah. is incredible. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful when you see yeah. the supernatural Instant power, how yeah. something yeah. can be completely shifted. But even if you have that experience mm -hmm. and have it maybe in numerous areas, you're always going to have areas as well that you have to mm -hmm. walk through. Wow. Because there's something that is fashioned True. in us and formed in us yeah. when we learn that dependence mm -hmm. on Him in the moment. Yes. When we learn how to fight the good fight of faith. Right. 
you know, that there's things that strengthen us. Yeah. Paul, who speaks about the thorn in the flesh. I mean, I'm sure he had to fight that good fight of faith. Yes. Yeah. Fight yeah. That thorn. yeah. So there's, there's benefits from instant miracles and then there's benefits from process. Yeah. And sometimes people feel if they don't get the instant miracle that God doesn't want to heal them. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love to encourage people you know, if God's going to do the instant miracle, great. Yeah. But if he doesn't, you can still step your way into healing and freedom by using the principles. Amen. If you're willing to do the work. Wow. So there's work involved. Yeah. There's also knowledge involved. A lot of people want to do it. They just don't know. Yeah. So one of my core scriptures in the ministry is Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. knowledge. Wow. So my job is here's the knowledge. Here are the tools. I'll show you how to use the tools. You've got to use them. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. But I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to put the tools in your tool belt. Yeah. And then you can run with them. Amen. So what encouragement can you give to someone or a young girl or a man even? Or even a dancer in the industry or an dancer. actress who may be struggling with an eating disorder because you walk through that. I did walk and through it and I'm so, it. so happy to say that I'm not Amen. in that space anymore. Yes, I mean, none of the freedom. things I was dealing with 10 years ago am I dealing with now. Wow. I don't have anxiety. I don't have fear. Yes. I have a lot of peace. You know, I'm on earth, so there's still issues. Yeah, you know, we still have issues that we're dealing with. But to be free in your mind yes. a lot of the time, That's to not have true. any addictions externally yeah. is a really good place. So to those that are watching and mm. listening, I would say, um, to just be hopeful mm. that no matter what you're going through, like God can bring you through. Mm. No matter how much you feel enslaved, mm -hmm. no matter how deep you are in bondage to whatever it is, yeah. God can set you free. There's nothing mm. that he cannot heal us from. Yeah. Nothing. No physical infirmity, no emotional infirmity, no addiction. He's the God of freedom. Amen. Where Nothing the Spirit of the Lord is, there is, there liberty. is freedom. Oh, yes. I just love that verse. And every day I claim divine health over myself. Like you said, the, one of the tools is speaking life. And that's how we renew our mind is speaking life. So speak wholeness over yourself and speak health, yeah. divine health over yourselves. Command your cells, your DNA, yes. your weight, everything yep. to come under the perfect alignment. Because You're no longer the, weighed by your weight. You're no longer <laughs> weighed, weighed down by your by weight. Your weight yes. Because Jesus went to the cross for our healing. He took our burden. He took all of, all of it on his back, the stripes on his back. God yeah. doesn't want to see us in bondage. And for mm -hmm. us women, especially men too, but especially with the mm -hmm. women, there's such an area, an there issue is. with food like, and our yeah. body image because God created us to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did. And we as women want to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the enemy just comes in Distorted. and twists that right. and gets us so obsessed about food, which is an incredible gift from God. It's a blessing wow. on earth, but gets us so obsessed that we're fearful of foods or we are you know, too, too much gluttonous with food. Yeah. So it's not about good or bad. This behavior is good or bad. It's about healing and wholeness Amen. and, yeah. and um, balance and just being free. Well, we're having so much fun today doing our girl chat with our dynamic guest, Robia Scott. We sure are, so be sure to catch part two of our interview with her on our next episode of the Elena and Natalia show. She has so much more to discuss and to share on her heart and also about all that the Lord has done through the pro-life film that she recently start, starred in called Unplanned. Yes, for more information on Robia Scott and to pick up a copy of her latest book, counterfeit comforts make sure to visit her website at robiascott.com and also please do show us some love as well by following us over on our twitter social media instagram yes. and facebook at we're all Elena under natalia, natalia TV. tv super easy to remember and you can watch all of our previous episodes on elena and natalia.tv forward slash show where if you missed one you can just catch it all there yes and just remember yeah. that you are god's treasured possession mm -hmm. his jewel his gem until next his Diamonds and pearls. Yeah, <laughs> diamonds and pearls too. And until next time, God bless. Thanks. Ciao. Bye. Jesus, you're all I